coming to the muscle spindle which are a uh, sensor receptor for stretch reflex the muscle spindle contains two type of fibers extrafusal fibers and intrafusal fibers extrafusal fibers they are regular contractile units of the muscle whereas intrafusal fibers they are muscle fibers in the muscle spindle which uh, which is the sense organ for the stretch reflex each muscle spindle consists of 10 uh, muscle fibers and these fibers are enclosed in a connective tissue capsule these fibers are more embryonic in character the fibers in the spindle have less distinct striation than the rest of the muscle fibers in spindle the ends of the capsule of the spindle are attached to the tendons at either end of the muscle or the sides of extrafusal fibers only the ends of intrafusal fibers are contractile there are two types of intrafusal fibers in mammalian muscle spindles these are called as nuclear back fibers and nuclear chain fibers nuclear back fibers they contain many nuclei in a dilated central area and so uh, they are called as nuclear back fibers there are two nuclear back fibers per uh, muscle spindle and uh, nuclear back fibers are of two types nuclear back fiber 1 with low levels of uh, uh, myosin atpase activity and nuclear back fiber 2 with a high level of myosin atpase activity nuclear chain fibers they are thinner and shorter and lacks definite back there are four or more nuclear chain fibers per muscle spindle and their ends connect to the sides of nuclear back fibers if you see the sensory innervation to the uh, spindle intrafusal fibers the it occurs through the, uh, the group 1a and 2 sensory fibers sensory nerve endings in each spindle are of two types they are they are primary endings and secondary endings primary are annulo spiral and secondary are flower spray endings primary endings are the termination of rapidly conducting group of 1a type of afferent fibers one branch of ia fibers innervates nuclear back fiber 1 and another band branch innervates the nuclear back fiber 2 and the nuclear chain fibers these sensory nerve fibers wrap around the center of the nuclear back and nuclear chain fibers and secondary fibers they are the terminations of group 2 sensory nerve fibers and are located near the end of the intrafusal fibers but only on the nuclear chain fibers if you see the motor innervation to the muscle spindle uh, it is the only organ receiving motor innervation and the motor innervation comes from gamma efferents that is uh, of lexal the the smaller motor neurons and they go to exclusively to muscle spindles the endings of gamma efferent fibers of two types plate ending on the nuclear fibers they are nominated as gamma 1 and trail ending on the chain fibers they are nomenclated as gamma 2 fibers beta motor neurons they are the larger motor neurons and they innervate both intrafusal as well as extrafusal fibers this is the diagram showing the intrafusal fibers of the muscle spindle they are the nuclear back fibers they are nuclear chain fibers nuclear back fibers they have a dilated portion in the middle and if you see the innervation they have a primary and secondary afferents whereas primary afferents they come from both uh, the annulo spiral spiral endings of nuclear back fibers and chain fibers whereas secondary afferents they are uh, going to arise from the flower spray ending which comes from the nuclear chain fibers and if you see the gamma innervation that is the efferents to the the muscle spindle the gamma 1 is going to innervate both the nuclear chain fibers and back fibers as a plate endings and trail endings whereas gamma 2 fibers they innervate mainly the uh, the nuclear chain fibers as a trail endings whereas beta efferent they innervate both the intrafusal as well as extrafusal fibers response of muscle spindle to stretch functionally muscle spindle shows two types of responses that is dynamic and static the dynamic 
responses by nuclear back fibers here the primary sensory nerve endings discharge impulses at rapid rate when muscle is rapidly stretched they fire less rapidly if stretch is continued the discharge of impulses starts only if the there is a change in the degree of stretching of the muscle thus the response depends on the rate of change in the length of the muscle whereas static response is seen by nuclear chain fibers when stretch is uh, continuing static response uh, comes comes into play thus muscle spindle gives response to change in the length of the muscles as well as rate of change in the length mechanism of activation of muscle spindle intrafusal fibers are parallel to the extrafusal fibers when the extrafusal fibers are passively stretched the stretch is transmitted to the intrafusal fibers there will be stimulation of 1a fibers which causes stimulation of the motor neuron and which leads to contraction of the extra fusal fibers which is which constitutes the stretch reflex and that leads to shortening of the muscle belly stimulation of gamma efferent produces the contraction of the intrafusal fibers the stretches the stretches that stretches the nuclear back portion of the spindles and uh, again there will be stimulation of 1a sensory fibers again that is going to stimulate uh, alpha I mean motor neuron which causes contraction of the extrafusal fibers again it is going to le lead to stretch reflex causing the shortening of the muscle belly thus a uh, muscle can be made to contract via stimulation of a motor neuron that innervate the extrafusal fibers directly or stimulation of gamma motor neurons that initiate contraction indirectly via stretch reflex stretching causes contraction of the extrafusal fibers and shortening of the muscles thus spindle discharge decreases the spindle and its contraction constitute a feedback circuit thus maintaining the length of the muscle fiber functions of stretch reflex it is important for maintenance of a posture uh, maintaining posture that is or changing the posture are affected by the appropriate adjustment of gamma motor neuron activity of different group of muscles the role of muscle spindle in voluntary motor activity normally for initiation of skeletal muscle contraction stimulation of motor neurons are necessary along with the motor neuron firing the gamma motor neuron also fire concomitantly so that skeletal muscle contraction can be made effective and which is called as alpha gamma linkage imagine what would have happened if this do not occur stimulation of the motor neuron causes initiation of the contraction of the skeletal muscle fibers but this contraction will cause uh, as uh, there is now shortening of the extrafusal muscle fibers relieving the stretch on the nuclear back fibers causing the 1a afferents to stop its discharge this in turn will lead to lengthening of the extrafusal fibers that is cancellation of the motor stimulation effect the concomitant firing of gamma uh, efferent is going to prevent this other function is damping action an important function of stretch reflex uh, is its ability to prevent oscillation or jerkiness of the body movements this effect can also be called as a signal averaging function of muscle spindle and the fourth function is also play an important role in the maintenance of the muscle tone